1.30 in the afternoon here in Lagos, Nigeria. 2.30 in the afternoon in Frankfurt. Hello and welcome to the program. We'll cross over to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange in a few minutes to grab what's today's market opening reactions to the weekend deadly uh, attack in France as well as the failed coup attempt in Turkey. We'll look at the markets and what's happening around the world. But let's start from home in Nigeria where inflation for the June uh, for the month of June, it's higher to 16.5%. In China, the property market recovers, but at a slower pace. Plus, trading figures from our fixed income market as we start another brand new trading week ahead of July MPC meeting. Let's start from what came out early today. Nigeria's June inflation, headline inflation rate rises to 16.5% last month. According to the data from the National Bureau of Statistics, the year-on-year -year increase was driven largely by imported goods, prices of energy and related items. In particular, electricity and liquid and solid fuels. Food inflation rose by 15.3% year-on-year and 1.4% month-on-month. The primary drivers here are price increases in bread and cereals, fish, meat and oil, and fats categories. Core inflation rose 16.2% year-on-year and 1.8% month-on-month, driven by price increases in electricity, liquid fuels, which include kerosene, and diesel, as well as furniture and passenger transport. We'll be talking to the Chief Executive Officer at Financial Derivatives, Bismarck Rawani, shortly on the program to bring us up to speed. Some perspectives on that. Meantime, newly appointed British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson says Britain will continue to cooperate closely with the European Union once it leaves the economic bloc following last month's Brexit referendum. The negotiations with the rest of the European Union is regarded as critical to UK's position as the region's financial hub. New Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said he would assure his EU counterparts on Monday that Britain would continue to cooperate closely with them once it lifts the block following last month's Brexit referendum. The message I'll be taking to our friends in, in the Council is that uh, we have to give effect to the will of the people and leave the European Union, but that in no sense means that we are leaving uh, Europe. We are not going to be in any way abandoning our leading role in European cooperation and participation of all kinds. And Johnson had a Sunday met EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini with both stressing their meeting had been held in good spirits, discussing a joint response to the failed coup in Turkey and a militant attack in Nice. Asked how ministers would find working with Johnson, who during the Brexit campaign compared the EU to Hitler's plan to dominate Europe, Mogherini simply said her exchange with him on Sunday evening had been very positive. She stressed that Britain remained a member of the European Union and there would be no negotiation of the terms of Brexit until London notifies formally that it is leaving under the terms of Article 50 of the EU Treaty. Part of the issues to be addressed is the UK's position on various trade deals as well as whether it will continue to be a global financial hub. Well, it's been a mixed Monday at the markets across Europe today. The stocks, stock markets were mixed. The uh, French market, the Paris Cacaron, was down about 0.07%. That's a little bit less than one-tenth of a percent. Gold was down. Crude oil is also trading lower, down by about one-tenth of a percent. The euro has been up today by 0.15%. The Turkish lira, where the Turkey, where the coup attempt took place over the weekend, was up. The bond yields also rising, uh, not just on the Turkish uh, sovereigns, but also on other Europeans, the German bond, the Spanish and the Italian bonds. So let's bring in Ulrich Bartz, who is uh, my colleague at uh, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, DWTV for financial, financial correspondent for channels on uh, television. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Ulrich. Let's uh, talk about what we came with over the weekend, the terror attack, the failed coup attempt in Turkey, and we've seen the numbers as it were, and of course the German DAX index just there across your shoulder is just right there at the base level. Yes, uh, the DAX is uh, down at a, um, a level of um, minus six points. Uh, it's down a lot more than it was uh, at the beginning of trading uh, when it actually started on a positive note. What does that tell us uh, here? I think 
as well as in other European markets. Uh, yes, there is nervousness. There is a big feel of uneasiness, of uncomfortableness vis-à-vis uh, -vis the events of especially uh, that took place in Turkey. Uh, it's not the kind of market, not the kind of day that you jump into equities uh, on, um, especially with uh, what can develop uh, from Turkey uh, going forward uh, with Erdogan uh, tightening his, his reign there. Um, but I think it still is a moderate reaction in comparison to what can happen. And it, it's also a moderate reaction uh, in terms of what happened in Nice uh, on, on Friday. Uh, on Friday, the market already had a chance to react to that attack uh, on the Promenade des Anglais in uh, Nice. And it was also a moderate reaction. Travel companies suffered, um, and travel companies are suffering today as well because of uh, the business that uh, is there in Turkey that's going to uh, be reduced. Uh, but people see that uh, events like these uh, don't often have long-lasting economic repercussions. It's different in Turkey, but certainly that goes for the terrorist attack in Nice. Yes, Ulrich, but is there anything positive there? News out of Asia, those folks are closed for the day. For Monday, the first trading day, but the Japanese telecoms giant SoftBank announcing plans to spend about 35 billion U.S. dollars to buy AIM holdings. Uh, this is good news for chip makers, and I'm sure the European uh, chip makers and other investors are watching this very closely. That's right. Uh, and the shares uh, here in the German market uh, of companies that are in that uh, sector are going up really nicely. Uh, se uh, Dialog Semiconductor is going up by about 4%. Infineon, which is a member of, of, of the DAX here, is also uh, going up uh, by quite a big margin. Um, when there's a big, juicy takeover like this, uh, it generally spreads to uh, companies in the sector or related to the sector. Why is this? Well, they think that um, uh, if there's one takeover, there could be another one. It could affect then the shares uh, of another company and pull it up. Um, ARM is really shooting up, 40% uh, the share as a reaction to this uh, takeover, which is a little bit surprising considering that SoftBank, uh, well, it has quite a big debt load. It sold some activities, it sold some shares, for example, in Amazon not too long ago. Uh, so it took the market uh, really by surprise. Yeah, Ulrich, let's wrap it up. A bit of uh, the, some of the raw materials for, for chip makers uh, comes from mining. Um, uh, you and I know that. So for banks, mining companies, the numbers looking too good. No thanks to some of the downgrades from uh, some of the rating agencies. Any news in the horizon that could switch things into the positive territory uh, for these uh, mines and, and banks? Yeah, I think uh, for mines, uh, for, for commodities companies, uh, you know, the, the world economy is still slowing, uh, but there are some uh, mitigating effects as well. Uh, the Brexit, for example, has pushed up gold and silver prices. The oil price is slowly edging up, even though it's not at that level yet where oil producing countries or oil companies uh, really have that level where they start uh, earning money. For banks, hmm, I don't really see any events in the next few weeks uh, that could be on the positive side. Uh, central bank money is already out there. We have zero interest rates. We have massive uh, printing of money. And we have a stress test coming up here in Europe. The uh, results uh, of the ECB test uh, will be published uh, two weeks from now, uh, this Friday, and then another week after that. Uh, so that's something that's hanging over uh, the people in the market here as is uh, the situation in Italy. 360 billion euros in bad debt, and nobody really knows where that's leading. Many people fear a banking crisis, not the greatest situation uh, for banks. So positive news there, mm, I don't see it. All right, thank you, Ori, for bringing us the European perspectives to today's trading day. Markets in Asia were also mostly up on Monday ahead of a relatively light data week uh, in the region. Let's come back to you after the break. We'll come back to Nigeria with our latest inflation numbers.